Yeah, too many things we got to address, man. So, okay, here we go. Base Nation Podcast, Base Nation Academy, Base Nation people, everybody, whoever's watching this, whoever's listening. Uh, anyway, I don't really do an introduction to who we are. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you have no ideas. Anyway, Derek Bennett, founder of Base Nation Academy, uh, all of that good stuff, Base Nation Lessons, Derek Bennett Lessons, all the same stuff. We've got Callan with me right here. He runs our social media and does some editing stuff for us. Uh, and a killer bass player, too. I'm not the only bass player on here. So, Thank you, man. <laughs> We got a lot of stuff to run through. So I see that we are getting a little bit of traction, right? People are watching. People are commenting. I think you put up a clip of us talking not too long ago um, of talking about the Seinfeld theme, right? Oh, yeah. So we got some comments on that. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, first of all, I wanted to show Callan this. I don't know if he even saw that. I don't know if you can even read that. So just read that for me, man, if you can see. Going to modeling. Is that what it says? <laughs> yes. Well, I appreciate the compliment. Oh, man. I saw that come through. It was like, it was yesterday. I was, I started cracking up. I was like, man. Wow. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. I said, hey, man, go ahead. I, go, you can do a little something on the side, a little model. You're, you're, I was like, okay, you're, cool, You're man. kickstarting my career right now. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. That was so funny, man. So I'm reading comments and stuff like that of just, you know, stuff that we're getting from the podcast. And, you know, I, I went through a couple of them, and I just want to talk about a few. That one I just saw, I just put up, and I just wanted him to see that because I know he didn't see it yet. But anyway, um, so I, didn't, I wasn't even going to talk about the Seinfeld thing. Uh, and just a little backstory about what we were talking about. Those who don't know, uh, a lot of people comment on the the slap bass stuff, and they go and refer to the sound Seinfeld theme. So obviously, the Seinfeld theme is played by a keyboard. It's a synth bass sound, right? Um, and apparently, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, man. Apparently, I'm going through the comments on like Instagram, and I saw this pop up literally like five minutes ago, like. Literally, this is not even what we we're talking about. This is like five minutes ago. So help me with this. <clears throat> so I don't know if you even saw this, right? So this is a this is a caption. This is a comment from Seinfeld music guy. Whoa! I'm assuming this is the guy that created the theme song. So I guess he's responding to somebody. I don't know if they were talking about. He said something. No offense, brother, but I'm just honored, dudes. Like you and Derek, bass, Derek bass lessons are familiar with the theme I wrote 30 plus years ago. I thought that was super cool, man. Oh, that's crazy right so <laughs> i saw that and i was like uh this gotta be the guys so i'm gonna do some research um it's gotta be the guy that, but that just kind of goes and you know we were talking about it and all fun um but we were really saying that everybody thinks it's a base but i guess that really speaks to how well he did that <laughs> And how well yeah. he play, how well he played it, and how well that sound was, and you know everybody knows the oh iconic theme, iconic iconic. It's it's the bass sound, but it's like a slap bass sound and tone of it. I just thought that was super cool, man. I read that. I'm assuming that that's the guy. Got to be the guy. He wouldn't be commenting saying that he wrote that <laughs> theme. Yeah, um, that's the guy. Seinfeld that, music guy. That's, I mean, and then like that's the your, and and then that's your name and that's your handle on Instagram. So, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't see anybody going to that to those lengths to say like they hey, they wrote that theme. So I just thought that was super cool, man. Um, that was just that was just that's just crazy. So we got yeah, a lot of comments awesome. on on that little clip. And um, just to go back on that clip, not saying that. I hate the Seinfeld theme. I was just saying, like, people th really think it's a bass. I was like, okay, if you really play bass, you know that that's not a bass. So, huge shout out to the Seinfeld music guy. <laughs> that's you. Thanks, dude. Uh, right, exactly. Um, but in other news, in other, in other news, uh, it was funny. I, I was scrolling. I never normally, I never really scroll on Facebook when I was watching. I was scrolling on Facebook and I saw a comment from uh one of our uh, I, I can't even say that now he's like i mean when you think of like greatest bassist ever especially new age like this generation mono neon has to come somewhere in that type of influential bass players of literally this 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 decade um 
even going by how young he is, he's already created a staple for it. I, I mean, I remember him before he was like the mon- I remember the poly neon. Like, I remember that yeah. when he was that before. He, he wasn't wearing the crazy stuff. I knew him as Dwayne. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was a monster back then, killing left hand bass player, whatever. So uh, he put up a post, man, and I couldn't have agreed more. I don't know if you mm-hmm. saw this. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. So let's 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 go to it. So when it comes to, I want to see. I want to get your thoughts on this too, because I, I've never f- agreed with something more. When it comes, why when it comes to a bass solo, everybody in the band <laughs> want to drop out, <laughs> and I would like blurp out that word or bleed up, you know. Anyway, expletive. <laughs> I've been supporting everybody's solos, but now you want to drop out. I need something to play around with too. Laugh out loud. I just thought this was like, I never understood why this happens. Like, I don't know if you ever in a band or any, like this happened to me a lot in like jazz, like my jazz combo when I was in high school. Everybody would drop out when the bass solo came around. I don't, have you ever even experienced that? I mean, it happened to me, it happened to me yesterday. Oh dude, I can't, like, I can't stand that. That's like a huge, and I asked that question when I was younger too, like, and I was playing, I was playing in high school. I even asked my band teacher. I don't think he had an answer for me because I would have remembered it because <laughs> I don't even think he just, I think he just said because it it's the bass. I don't even think he had an actual answer. Um, yeah. And it was the funniest thing, man. And I like, I felt, so, when it first happened, I felt so uncomfortable because here we go. You know, the whole band is playing. All right, sax player, you know, we're playing B flat concert B, B flat you know jazz type of scale or, or or blues type of progression you know jazz sax player get his thing and trumpet player okay they get there even trombones blah 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 all right drum not even drum player but even can't piano player they get their solo everybody's still playing when it comes to bass it's like these weird hits like that come out of nowhere <laughs> yeah it's like weird hits every time i'm like i'm like what like why and and the thing about that is i I don't know why it kind of it was really a pet peeve of mine because I wanted to practice my solo ideas on top of the music. But when that happened, when that break happened, I felt like it was like just me against the world. Like I I, I feel like I was playing to nothing. Um, I don't know. It just felt so weird. Like we were singled out like that. I don't know if anybody knows and anybody has an explanation. I never understood this. Uh, even in regular bands, sometimes everybody just drops out. I like to be able to play just like everybody else. I like to play on top of the chord changes and I like to hear something to play too. I don't know. So you said it happened to you yesterday. What, what was that like? It, it's, I mean, it happens all the time, but uh, yeah, no, I was, had a solo yesterday. It's just, you know, we're just reading charts and, just, you know, charts has bass solo and all of a sudden it's just like just drums. And I'm like, okay, all right, that's all right. You know, I can I can outline some chords, and then the drums dropped out, and I was like, "What? I, I really?" <laughs> it's like, come on! I was just talking to uh, Edwin Livingston. Edwin, Edwin's this incredible bass player in L.A. Uh, he's played with like everybody, and he was. Uh, I was talking to him a couple weeks ago, and he was saying, "Like, man, I can't stand it when people drop out with the bass solo." He's like, "I've been comping for you all night, you know, like every tune, I'm right there, I'm working my ass off comping you, and then yeah. I have my turn, everybody's out." Everybody takes yeah, the water break. We got to be the backbone. We have to support, like you, like 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 Mon will say, we got to support you guys. And when it comes to our solo, it's just like, and I think a, a lot of memes are centered around that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes you see memes when they're saying like, okay, it's time for the bass solo. Everybody kind of walks out now. I think that kind of has something to do with it because it makes it. I don't know. It's just a surprise. It's such a surprise factor. It seems like everybody just drops out and it's like a super, like, I don't know. It's just a soft time. Like, I don't know, it's just weird. I don't really get or understand. Uh, and I think it makes that correlation with bass solos when everybody talks like, okay, the bass solo is usually boring. Well, everybody dropped out. <laughs> I have to compensate for every, <laughs> everybody dropping out. Like that, that means my solo has to be that much better or that, yeah. that good to where I can still grab the attention of people um while it's going on and i I don't know this happens all the time even in the bands that i've played with even now to this day there's like a part there's where uh there's a solo for me everybody in the band and and obviously solos then when it comes to me it's just me and drums 
I never, I just never understood, I never understood that. I just, I never did. On, on top of that, it's tough for bass to accompany themselves. Like with keyboard, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just thinking off the top of the head now and I'm kind of sharing what I'm thinking and, you know, my thoughts. But with keyboard, they can kind of back themselves up, right? Playing chords on the left hand totally. or chords on the, you know, melody on the right hand, whatever, whatever you, um, they can kind of back themselves up. But with bass, it's tougher to do that. On top of that, our bass line drops out and we go to solo. So it feels like so much of the song is just gone. You know what I mean? Or so much of the feel or so much of the groove is just not there anymore because we drop out too solo. I'm like, hey, man, like you playing keyboard, like, you know, handle the bass line for me or something. Or if you're playing guitar, handle some somebody. Help. <laughs> help me, please. <laughs> um, that's 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 how I felt. Like, I kind of felt like I was just, you know, just thrown out there in the water um, with no lifeguard, you know. So I, I, I don't know. I just I thought that was pretty i've heard it before but i haven't heard anybody say that in a long time but i've always felt that and i don't know why i honestly genuinely do not understand and so if anybody can tell me why i don't even know if anybody else does no i don't get it um yeah i don't know i don't know I don't know. It doesn't, I don't know it why it's, sense I don't, to me. I don't know why it's different for bass than it is for everybody else. And then it makes it worse because you, your bass line and the groove just drops. So it's super noticeable when the bass starts soloing. Because on top of everybody dropping out, no groove no more besides the drums. Right? No bass line, nothing to work off of. Um, I don't know. And in some weird way, I think it kind of challenged me to an extent to like, okay, I got my, my solos have to be just that much better. Like I, I have to make sure my solo is killing because everybody's going to walk you? out. Yeah. You're the only one out there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Everybody's going to walk out, man. After a while, if, if, if it's not. Um, but yeah, that's happened all the time in, in my whole career of, of, of playing. Um, so yeah, when he said that, when Mono said that, man, I was just, I thought it was so funny. He had like a bunch of shares on that same thing. So I guess I'm not the only one, or I guess we're not the only one that feel like that. So it was so many shares on that one post. Um, and a lot of people do feel like that too. So we're on a hunt to try to figure out why the hell this happens. <laughs> Nobody right. knows. Nobody knows. Let's get to the bottom of this. By next right. episode, we'll have some answers. Yeah, we, 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 we shall, we will, we will have these answers, but I feel like I don't know. I don't know. I just, I feel like it should not be. I feel like the bass player should get an equal opportunity to be able to solo just like everybody else. I feel like I'm talking about civil rights or something. Um, <laughs> to be able to, literally, to be able to solo uh, equality for all bass players, right? Um, yeah, I just, I just feel like that. I, I feel like that stunts the growth too. And I think people get scared or bass players get scared of soloing because it's so... I mean, even if you're not used to it, it's such a crazy time for everybody to just break out, boom, you now. At, at, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, at least if you have some accompaniment with other instruments, you don't feel as alone. Um, I don't know. I still feel that to this day. I've been playing for 20-something years, and I still hate that. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I want that same type of solo that a sax player would get, too. And I think sometimes bass players get certain types of solos. I don't know if you yeah. know what I mean, like on totally. certain so certain songs, like, oh, no, you're only uh, allowed or it only makes sense for you to solo on this song. I don't like that. Like, I, I just I want the same opportunity as everybody else. Um, and I just feel like we're always called on to just like solo on a funk song or like solo on a song that has, I don't know, a certain type of groove to it. I don't I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just me talking. I don't know if that happens to you. Uh, the, yeah, 100 percent. Like yeah. what was it? What was what was it the other day that you were playing? Like what kind of kind of song? Funk, you were... funk song. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's funk song. Exactly. My point. My uh, point exactly. Yep. My point exactly, man. So I, I just feel like even like ballads and things like that, and you know, on a even on a blues song, I play a lot of blues festivals and stuff like that. Like I feel like, man, I want to stab at this like a nice, you know, medium tempo slow blues song that i can solo to but nope that's never the case i gotta keep i gotta hold down the doom, 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 doom. like i gotta hold down that whole triadic bass line type the whole thing. time the whole entire time and i never get to just stretch out man i just i love those guitar players that can do that um and just stretch out 
you know, I just, I don't know. If I'm going to solo, I want to tell this. So give me that. Give me that kind of solo, man, so I could just stretch yeah, out. Give me a ballad. To. Yeah, yeah. And it was one time, man, we were playing, Um, I was playing with Robert Randolph. We were playing, like, let me tell you the thing about Rob. I don't, do you know Robert? Do you know Robert yeah. Randolph? Okay. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, crazy, by the way. Um, dude is like family. We grew literally grew up together. We went to the same church or organization. So the summers and the different conventions that we played at, like he was, we were always, you know, around together. He did some stuff with my dad. He would come to the house anyway. So we've known each other for a long time. Robert will call me out of the blue, not even call. He'll text me and he'll say, Hey, um, can you do a, a two month tour and fly out Tuesday? <laughs> I was like, what? Like I'm, I'm like I'm not even joking. Like he did that not too long ago. So he would he would literally Damn. ask me last last minute like, "Hey man, can you just do this gig with me really quick?" And it'll it'll be like the either the next day or the next week. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's just how he is. It's hilarious. Uh, but anyway, one time we did this gig, and it was not too far away from where I live, and so we, I was able to drive. And he's like, "Hey man, hit with me." Blah blah blah. You know, it's gonna be you know it's gonna be fun. That's all he says. All he says. Like no plan, no nothing. It's just hilarious. Um, but we played this blues gig, and now Robert is a monster. Like, I, and I get a lot of my inspiration from steel guitar players, too. And I talked about that before. Um, but Kingfish, yeah. I don't know if you know Kingfish. Oh yeah, man, 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 man. I think I put a post. Yeah, put a post up about when I played with him. Dude is mm-hmm. absolutely unbelievable guitar player and like stuff like that. I want to be able to like solo and just like capture, you know, audiences yeah. like that guy can, man. It's just, it's absolutely ridiculous the way that they can work a crowd and just the way that they can solo. Um, I don't know. I just, like I said, I just want to feel like bass players can get that same opportunity. But this guy, Kingfish, was killing. I mean, every time he took a solo, it was just like a masterpiece. Master, yeah, master, genius. Yeah, I mean, but he has he's had that practice to do that because not only because he's out in front, he plays guitars mainly one of the most you know known solo instruments that can be. Um, so he has had a lot of practice to be able to do that. Um, I feel like when bass players go to solo, they don't really have a lot of practice. So that's why that whole stereotype with bass players is like. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a it, I've seen do I can think of so many memes right now. Like I remember a meme where bass player was playing to like a herd of cows. I don't even know if that's the right term a herd or a group, whatever. Anyway, a group of cows and they were running away like, you know, like that's that's a meme right there. Uh, one of them, the bass player yeah. is playing. Everybody walks out the, the audience and, you know, goes to the bathroom or something. I'm like, it's such a crazy stereo and it's so cold too. like all of these memes. I'm like, man, we get no oh, love. At brutal. All. Yeah, brutal, <laughs> man. You know, you know all too well. So I just I just feel like we should have, you know, more opportunity. You know, I think that's setting us up for failure when we don't have as much practice or even being able to play along with the progression. You know what I mean? Like right. even even like even like you said, you said okay, yeah. Like even if they stop, like okay, maybe I can play stuff to a progression. But it's it's nice playing it by yourself. But it's nice having some context to what you're playing on top of too. Hundred um, percent. So I, I don't know. I just I I feel like I feel like it's it's unfair, and I'm I'm going on strike, man. I just I feel like <laughs> I'm just and, gonna go and, on. <laughs> and on top of that, I mean, you have like guitars playing. I don't know. I mean, if you're doing a 15 song set, they got solo on 13, 14 songs. Literally, almost all the sets I play, they solo on one song or no song. Just yeah, just one, just one. And yeah, I mean, like, it's it's crazy. Like I said, the opportunity isn't there, so it's harder for us to become more, you know, well versed on something that we haven't really so, had the opportunity to do. Even still, doing it when you're practicing by yourself at home, it's completely different than playing out, you know, with a band or with a group and having some people accompany. You you can do that all day long and practice, but you almost have to be thrown in the game to be, you know, to get that full yeah. experience. So but if we don't have that many opportunities, man, what, what do you, I, I don't know. And, and I never wanted to be that bass player, you know, to where people don't look forward to their solo, you know? Yeah. 
Um, I never wanted to be. And sometimes when you hear bass solos a lot too, and now I'm just kind of nitpicking now too. And I've always heard, you know, a lot of bass players when it, when it happens to me, when I, when I was growing up earlier, I would hear them and it did when it wouldn't play to the song. They would kind of go completely off of the song. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool and all, but I'm like, I want to hear you, you know, be able to play on the song too, or with the chord changes or the progression as well. Uh, And I always heard this like, Okay, um, like, I don't know, it's just, it, there's a show. I don't know what show it was. What show was it? Or was it a movie? Was it Step Brothers? Step Brothers where he had a bass, like he had a drum solo, like in the middle of like a, of a mm-hmm. ballad or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Dude, it was hilarious. I, I crack up every time I see that. But it's kind of like that, like randomly, like <laughs> bass solo or drum solo. <laughs> like, like yeah. it comes out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Out yeah. of, it just comes out of nowhere and you play something completely different than what this, you know what I mean? But it's almost like we have to revert to doing that because everybody drops out, you know? And right. I'm, even guilt, I'm even guilty of that too. Sometimes I play something complete opposite of what the song is. I might stay in the same key. <laughs> They're lucky. I might stay in the same key, but I'll play something completely opposite of what, you know, the song yeah. actually is. Um, but I just, I feel like that's sort of a cop out a little bit. Um but yeah, anyway, I just I never wanted to be one of those guys, man. I just always wanted to make sure I knew how to play over chord changes. I can play the chords, period. Um, even, yeah, man, it's just, it's tough. It's tough. I, I think bass players need a little bit more opportunity when that comes about. I mean, we need yeah. a little bit more love. You get drum solos all the time. You hear drum solos more, to me, you hear drum solos more than bass solos. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's that's just you know that's just me um i don't know i don't know i just i feel like we it's one of the most or people say it's one of the most easiest instruments to play uh only because you only play one note at a time uh like with guitar you got to play several notes piano you got to play several notes drums you got several things going on so everything is kind of multi you know tasking as far as playing with what with bass is less of that so i feel like we should have more of a opportunity to do that um Right. But anyway, anyway, huge shout out to Mono, one of the greatest. I'm, I'm hands down. So, anybody can argue with me. Like I, I don't care. The greatest bassist this today if, of this generation. Yeah. Um, oh, hands down. He, he is. He is it. The the most the most unique, most different. Not just different, but the dude can play. Like I don't think people even understand <laughs> like the level uh, of this yeah. guy's playing and, and the fact that he can groove like nobody's business. Um, yeah, he was on. Uh, so you did that gospel thing, uh, oh, the yeah, videotape the, uh, that came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, with uh, the four guys. Yeah. Right, right, right. So there, I think that w- it must have been a series, I guess, and they've done a few of those. But I remember before your guys he was on one, one. Mm-hmm. he was on one, and yeah, it was back like before the mono neon days, before the crazy clothes. Yeah, yeah, it was before. It was, was up yeah, there it was before and, that. He, st- I think he still had a sock on his base. Um, but that was, right. that was <laughs> that's always yeah, that, been that. Yeah, that was before those days, and that was he was Dwayne. He was Dwayne. Um, and and yeah, it was the Gospel Chops. Uh, it is. I think it is a, like a series because it's they've had several bass different sessions, yeah. and then they've had drum sessions of that. Um, but yeah, the guys that he was with, I can't even remember exactly the group of guys, but I know Goucher was on. I think Hadrian was mm-hmm. on one time. Bubby was on, and. Yep. Um, yeah, he was on. I can't remember. I think Damien was on. Damien um, Erskine was on. Yeah, yeah. Damien. I love uh, that guy. is amazing. I love him. He's um, my man. Yeah, he's he's nuts. He's nuts, man. Um, all of those guys are nuts. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Anyway, anyway, but there's a lot of ton of guys. I don't even know. Like it was weird when they even asked me. Like, why me? <laughs> like it was so like I felt so out of place. I'm like, that's it's my favorite one though. I, I really, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just I felt like I yeah. Anyway, you're super critical of yourself anyway. But I, I just was like, man, why me? I mean, I know I think we were like, I think it was the first couple years we were just kind of coming out, you know, doing social media stuff, and I mean the the whole thing like Base Nation period kind of got a name for itself but i mean i'm definitely honored to be one of those guys among the guys that i was with um some of my closest friends now i mean they were even before but killers 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 man i mean 
killers and they've all been it's funny they've all they've all been in the base nation academy they've all been inside and done something um right. got justin kenny uh k base everybody knows k base uh snoop uh frank like everybody's been on yeah. uh frank wasn't on with us he's uh, frank definitely should have been in that in that group but even everybody man because frank is a monster too uh but yeah no that was a cool little experience it was just like base heaven man it's like just like five five and six guys just playing just smacking all day long like just you know even the night before i don't think we even talked about this uh we had a session it was just like a sound type of check but we stayed there like almost all night long and just played like it was four bases it was me kenny uh J- justin and snoop was it four of us yeah it was only four of us and so, we yeah. just we just shed like bass shed which normally never happens i don't really get a chance to do that usually it's like with a bunch of drummers and it turns into a drum off um <laughs> <laughs> when that happens uh but yeah now that was a super cool time man that was a super cool thing and um i wish i, I want a lot of other bass players to be able to do that too man to just kind of piggyback off of different bass hell me and you did it when we got together it's oh, just yeah. kind of sh- just shedding man where is that footage we got did i did you get somewhere did you get that somewhere on vimeo <laughs> we got we got to get that up man i think before i was trying to even look for it i was like i was scrolling for so long um because that was two years right that's two years ago maybe yeah that sounds right wow i don't know, I don't know. yeah that's it sounds crazy when you think about it now um i got a lot of questions about nam man a lot of questions about nam uh you're going right I'm trying to go. I just, uh, a couple of base companies hit me up over the last nice. week asking if I'd be there. So I was like, all right, all right. There's a little bit of pull, but, uh, nice. I don't know. Are you, are you thinking about it? You and Jeff? I don't know, man. I, don't, I, I have get, no idea. It's, it's been it's, time for December now. I know. Right. We always wait to the last minute, but, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot going on this year. Um, the year that we went, just going to be straight up. It was not great. Um, <laughs> but I mean, we, they were just kind of getting off with the whole COVID thing. And then I think it's, right. you know, very, very, very few companies. It's the smallest I've ever seen it be. Um, yeah. And I think it's pretty, it's pretty much getting back to normal, I'm assuming. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's definitely great to see everybody there. All of those companies, all of those guys, all of the relationships we've built over the years. Um, great experience for anybody else that's planning on trying to go or thinking about going. Um, I recommend it to all musicians. I do. At least you go one time. Um, yeah, at least one time. You'll see all of your, you know, all of the companies, literally, you can possibly think of <laughs> under one roof. Um, yeah. Not only that, just kind of seeing other musicians, other guys, uh, building some relationships, networking. That's kind of how I did what I did. And um, when we first started that that kind of thing and built so many relationships now to this day it's just cra- it's just crazy totally. now that i think about it now looking back but i don't know man i'll i'll i'll, I'll see maybe i'll decide last minute i don't even know yeah i remember um, i ran into uh i ran into damian erskine there uh oh yeah years ago and it was at a point in my plan i mean this is like maybe i was two or three years into playing uh and i was still super fresh and nice. i remember hearing all of this you know not i'll just say non-pentatonic stuff you know i mean i was hearing a lot of enclosures pentatonic stuff right so but i'm just saying when you're when you're a beginner like that's that's what you're in those are the scales you're living in and that's what you hear 24 7 at least for me so when (laughs) i'm hearing i I know all right i love it (laughs) non-pentatonic's a little brutal but i'm hearing things that that i can't play and I remember mm. just struggling with that idea and, and not being able to hear chromaticism very well. Mm. Um, and I remember running into him and I didn't know who he was at the time, but I heard him play. Did he uh, have the long, the long, uh, Oh beard? yeah. He's got the, yeah. the pigtails and the beard. <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. like, okay, this guy's cool. Like I, I can talk to him, but I didn't know that he was a big deal and you know, one of the best around. And, uh, I, I just went up to him. I was like, how do you do that? Like, what, yeah. what are you thinking? What scales are you thinking? And he was mm-hmm. like, well, where are you? And I played a little bit and he's like, okay, well, it's, you know, you're using a lot of the pentatonic shapes and, and he's like, this is, this is what you, this is what to do. And he yeah. was like, I want you to outline all of your modes, mm. you know, just one, three, five, seven. 
Yeah. Just go up and, and just play that up and down and get super comfortable with, you know, modes and triads. Um, and I, at first I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. Modes, man. Right, right, right. It, it took me a long time. But then when I actually put in the work, I was like, oh, that's what he's talking about. Mm. And it totally opened the doors. You know, but that I mean, Nam is the perfect place for that because you see these people who are just incredible players. I mean, whether they're well known or not, everybody has really valuable advice and really valuable things to say. Absolutely, it's it's funny, man. Like I, I love that. I, that's what it is. That's literally what it's all about, man. With with Nam and the the one reason why I decided to go the first time is because there were clips on YouTube of guys at Nam. And these were guys that I never heard of before. Um, this is super early in my playing, but I've never heard of it before. And I was kind of enclosed as far as, you know, as far as influence. You know, I knew the big guys, you know, big bass players, but the guys that not really a lot of people talked about, there were clips of them online on YouTube. And I was like, man, and they were like together just kind of trading ideas. And I'm like, where is this? So I just had to, like, I have to get there. Uh, one of my biggest... Um, my camera's acting crazy, but I'm coming back on one second. That's right. I'll, I'll take it solo. It'll be back. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So back. Um, one of my biggest influences, man, Donald Alford. And he was playing. I saw a clip of him. Huge shout out to Donald, man. Amazing bass player. I mean, amazing. A lot of my influence comes from him. Not a lot of people know that. Um mm. I saw a clip of him, him, I think it was him and Damo, I believe. Um, Damo Farmer, huge shout out to Damo. They're all just crazy bass players. I love all of those guys. Uh, but they were playing back and forth together. I was like, I got to get in the room. To, I, I don't even care if, like, if they're there, like, that's fine. Like, But I got to get in whatever room they're in. Um, so that was my first experience getting to Nam, and I just had to like I wanted to be around those guys and just kind of soak up whatever I possibly could because what you said is so so valuable, man. Like it, it was tough, like you say, it was tough for you to hear chromaticism. Like you kind of got stuck in that pentatonic world, right? And you're hearing stuff that you really never heard before. Not only you could never heard, but really never did, right? Yeah. Um, so it it gets your mind and your brain open, uh, and I'll always say the best type of uh, learning experiences is the exposure like if you don't if you never heard it and you don't know it can be done you're not going to attempt it right so being right. exposed to all of these things you really hear we talked about it a little bit when we talked about the the young prodigies like the kids um mm -hmm. that are just crazy nowadays they have a lot of exposure to so many people and they have the whole internet at their hands to be able to see and look back and you know get their influence from whoever but I just wanted to get there, man. And getting that influence from a lot of people, man, I saw Hadrian there. Like, I, I got to get in the room with him. Like, I, I have to, like, what the hell is he thinking? Like, what, whatever he's eating, I want to eat. Like, whatever he's <laughs> drinking, I'll have. Like, <laughs> like not yeah. even lying, man. Uh, it was that crazy to where I just, I just wanted to get in the room. I just wanted to be wherever they were. Okay, California, I'm in New York. First time I went, like, I really didn't have... The money to go like I'm not even gonna i'm just gonna be transparent like I, I didn't have the money to go i went with nothing um i stayed at a relative's house that lived, lived like two hours away that i didn't realize until i got there <laughs> um i thought i was Ouch. in la and it was right i thought i was in la but it was in anaheim so they lived in la somewhere off it wasn't even in la it was like somewhere off i don't know crazy Whoa. anyway i had to drive Ouch. two hours back back and forth but i was like i don't care like i just need to get there but it was like the best thing that I probably ever could have done. Um, created so many yeah. different relationships, not only just with the bass players, with the companies and, you know, how we kind of birth our, you know, what we do now and, and with the lessons and everything. It's just, I don't know. I really, I really recommend everybody go. Uh, I never really said or told that, I don't think, to anyone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's once you get inspiration yeah. like that, you, you do what you need to do to... Um, to definitely to get in the room or to just be around uh just just get that exposure you know totally uh but yeah man uh anyway so we've got a lot more to, to go uh but i want to keep these a little you know kind of compact uh podcast this we got probably like 30 minutes or something like that but that's cool man anything else if not we're going to head out and go to the next 
theme or guess to the next, I guess, conversation, <laughs> I guess next time we get on. I don't know. We might have skipped a week. No, we didn't. That's on me. We got to get that. We got to get that out last week when we had all of those technical <laughs> difficulties. Yeah, that maybe that one should stay uh, stay <laughs> in the editing room. <laughs> nah, we'll, we'll get it out, man. There was some good stuff going on in there. Was, we had some, we had we were talking about some good stuff. We just kept we kept getting interrupted, but um, but yeah, guys, thank you for please keep commenting. I, I'm laughing at a lot of these comments that I'm seeing. Um, the <laughs> feedback that we're getting is really really cool. Uh, if you're not a part of the Base Nation Academy, I strongly suggest that you do uh, and check it out and and be a part of it. And uh, so link is going to be somewhere around this if you're not watching this in the Academy already. Um, yeah, if you want to just take your base plan to the next level, you can learn a ton of stuff here on YouTube. But it's a little personal touch, more of a personal touch on in the Academy along with some other things. I won't brag about it. I'll let you see for yourself. Um, but yeah, anything else, man? What you got going on? So, uh, a couple more weeks of school. Christmas yep. break and then uh, prepping for a yeah, tour for six weeks early next year. Ooh, nice, nice. Yeah, nice, sweet man. That'll be, yeah, that'll be something. On, yeah, I'm working on uh, right now. I'm emailing all my professors uh, and just being like, "Hey, is it okay if I am gone yeah. for six consecutive weeks?" And they're all like, yeah. "No." <laughs> so <laughs> trying to trying to work that out because I would yeah. graduate next semester. That's supposed to be it. So wow. We'll it would that we'll set see you. Well, I mean, I I guess it depends. Or I, I was thinking, it would that set you back at all, or um, as far as you know, getting your credits or being up to par or right. with your classes or anything like that. That got to be tough. Take man. another semester, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm trying to yeah. trying to do it, but I'll see if I can do school on the road. But uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. No, it, we'll see. It's tough. It's tough. But at least, at least you're doing stuff, doing what you want to do. You love to do, right? For sure. What about you? What are you up to? Um, nothing, man. It's just nothing much, really. I mean, same kind of stuff. Always staying busy, but you know, this season is coming up. It's always pretty crazy. Um, I don't know. Just lately, it's been super crazy. A lot of deaths going on. Uh, it's just I don't know. The whole month of November. Sorry to take it take it there, but <laughs> that's just what's been happening. Um, so you know, kind of keeping it chill. You know, nothing crazy. This this season come comes up. We usually always have some type of, you know, holiday concerts and all that kind of stuff coming up. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of that is 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 on the way. Um, other than that, man, nothing really crazy. Uh, eventually, want to get out of here and do a little vacay. Um, eventually, <laughs> uh, come on plan. over to California. Come to there Nam. you go. Right, that's Where's what the <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah, try to try to see what, what's up with that and um, make up my mind about coming to Nam or not. Uh, and I just got a message not too long ago for the podcast of asking where was I coming. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's about it, man. Just kind of hanging low and uh, taking it easy, man. I'm just I got to get back in the get back in the gym. Took a couple weeks off after Thanksgiving. After like eating like an idiot, like eating like <laughs> crap, man. It's just I don't know. I just got to yeah. regroup. I have to regroup myself, so I got to get back in the gym and just get back on track with stuff. So other than that, man, I'm good. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, we we'll always want to, you know, your feedback and you know, kind of converse back and forth with you guys. And uh, you get, can't forget about your starting your modeling too. Now I'm looking at the comments. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Before next week. Before next week. Yeah, that's that's we're gonna come in with that news next week and let me know how that goes. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll come in with the shots. <laughs> <laughs> right, the headshots. Right. All right, guys, that's me and Callan out. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. <laughs>